Number 10, how can you evaluate this particular limit? Like the previous problems, we need to factor before we can substitute. So let's begin by factoring the trinomial on the bottom. Notice that the leading coefficient is not one. So what we need to do is multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. Three times negative eight will give us negative 24. And then we need to find two numbers that multiply to 24, but add to the middle coefficient negative 10. So write in a list of factors. If we divide negative 24 by one, we get negative 24. Divided by two, we get negative 12. Divided by three, we get negative eight. If we divide it by four, we get negative six. Five doesn't go into 24, but six does. And when it reverses, you can stop. Now notice that two and negative 12 add up to negative 10. So those are gonna be the factors we're gonna use. Let's replace the middle term negative 10x with negative 12x plus 2x. The order in which you put these two really doesn't matter. It's really more of a preference. You can still get the same answer if you wrote it in reverse. So now we're gonna factor by grouping. Notice that the ratio three and negative 12 is the same as two and negative eight. Negative eight divided by two is negative four. Negative 12 divided by three is negative four. When the first two terms have the same ratio as the last two terms, you could factor by grouping. So let's take out the GCF in the first two terms. That's gonna be three X. Three X squared divided by three X is X. Negative 12 X divided by three X is negative four. Now the GCF for the last two terms is positive two. 2x divided by 2 is x. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Now, when you get a common factor, you know you're on the right track. So let's factor out x minus 4. We get 3x. And if we take x minus 4 out of this term, we're left with plus 2. So what we have here is the limit as x approaches 4. And on the bottom, we have x minus 4 times 3x plus 2. Now, in the numerator, we don't have a trinomial, but we have a polynomial with four terms. Notice that the ratio of the first two coefficients is the same as the ratio of the last two coefficients. Negative 48 divided by negative 16 is positive 3. 3 divided by 1 is also 3. So because the first two terms have the same ratio of coefficients of the last two terms, we could factor by grouping. So if we take out the GCF in the first two terms, that's gonna be X, actually X squared. X cubed divided by X squared is X. Three X squared divided by X squared is three. So we have plus three. In the last two terms, the GCF is gonna be negative 16. Negative 16x divided by negative 16, that's going to be positive x. Negative 48 divided by negative 16 is positive 3. So next, we could factor out another GCF, x plus 3. So we're left with x squared and negative 16. Now, notice that we have a difference of perfect squares. So for x squared minus 16, we could factor that further using the formula a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is four. One will be plus, the other will be minus. So this polynomial can be factored this way. It's gonna be x plus three times x plus four times x minus four. So now we could cancel out the x minus four term. I mean the x minus four factor rather. That is the factor that prevents us from using direct substitution because four minus four is zero. Now that that particular factor has been eliminated, we can use direct substitution. 
So what we have left over is the limit as x approaches 4 of x plus 3 times x plus 4 over 3x plus 2. So using direct substitution, it's going to be 4 plus 3 times 4 plus 4 over 3 times 4 plus 2. 4 plus 3 is 7. 4 plus 4 is 8. 3 times 4 is 12. Twelve plus two is fourteen. Now fourteen is seven times two, and eight we can break that up into two times four. So doing it this way, we could cancel a seven, and we could cancel a two. So we're left with the final answer, which is four. So that is the value of this entire limit.